Hi everyone and thank you for joining us again today. We're hopefully going to be doing two interviews for you today, um, starting with Frances Featherstone and hopefully Felicity Flutter in a little bit, but we're having a bit of technical issue, but hopefully she'll be joining us. Um, but hello Frances. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> Um, we're going to quickly show you um, your page in the magazine, in the Art360 magazine, before we get going. Um, so Leslie's going to put that up on the screen for us. If you want to have a look at that, that's on our website. I know I say that every single day. <laughs> but that's there for you. Yeah. Do you remember what number you are, Francis? Oh, gosh. I no, I don't. I think I'm towards the end. I think I joined quite towards the end. It was brilliant with Louisa. She was like, one. <laughs> it was just that, done. I, I heard that. <laughs> really I, I thought I'd better pay attention to where I was after that, and then I obviously didn't. So that page looks fantastic. I love that work in the top right. The colours in that are beautiful. Thank you. It's actually behind me on the wall, so you can see it in my studio. Oh, fab. So we can have a closer look at that later. Brilliant. Um, and that's got your contact details, your website, and everything on there. Brilliant. Right, so Francis, if you could start us off by just telling us a bit about your artist story and how you got to where you are now, that'd be that'd be brilliant. Yeah, no worries. Um, well, I come from a family who are quite arty. Um, my granddad um, was an architect and he painted in oils and um, both my parents went to art college. Um, but they went, my mum became a silversmith and my dad a furniture designer. Um, but my dad um, taught me well, he got me some oils when I was seven and um, so I painted oil paintings quite young. Um, I managed to get an art scholarship to secondary school. Um, unfortunately I didn't stay at that school for very long because it didn't work out but um, um, you know I kind of knew that art was my thing and um, it was definitely my strongest subject. So um, that I, it, I never had to question it really. Um, and then I did the final, I did an art foundation and at that stage you could only do an art foundation at your local, where it was local to you. So I went to Chesterfield, um, which was um, a good, good base where you practice a lot of different things, sculpture and ceramics and painting and textile. So um, yeah, it's a really, really fun year actually. Um, and then I did a fine art degree um, in Bristol. Um, which is great again, but it was very, very conceptual. Um, things like ateliers and things like that, you just, I didn't know about them. I don't think they really existed. Um, so it wasn't a technical degree at all. It was 50% um, art theory um, and it was about concepts and about, um, um, you know, finding your journey and what you wanted to say. Um, and um, you could realise it in any way. And um, basically, um, hardly anyone was painting in oils. There were a couple of us, but um, you know, it, it, it was a lot of installations, a lot of video um, and um, sculpture. It was, it was a mixture. Um, so it was a really good, it, I mean, I had a great time and I had a brilliant um, um, teacher called Gary Peters who, who taught philosophy and um, got us all very excited about about the world. Um, so I did that, um, got a first, um, all very good, but I just like panicked then and thought, there's no way I'm going to become a struggling artist. There's no way I'm actually going to be able to make it in this world. You know, I need to get a proper job. So um, I quickly did an MA in interactive multimedia um, and, um, and went straight and got a job and, and um, ended up working at the BBC as a designer. Um, and at that time, the BBC was the um, biggest website in the world. And um, I was um, designing the, the food website page, um, which again was the biggest food, um, you know, it was the biggest um, page for food, again, in the world, uh, recipes and things like that. And then I moved on to Lifestyle and redesigned with a colleague and um, the Lifestyle website and um, became a senior designer and got more and more senior. So I stopped really designing and more managing. Um, and then I had children and, um, and then I just thought, this is my opportunity. This is my opportunity, you know, with my husband working as well and me on maternity leave, I can, you know, I can maybe pursue my dream. And, um, and um, yeah, and that's where I am today. I, I'm, yeah. So um, <laughs> now I'm um, exploring my journey <laughs> in, in, back into painting. 
Oh, how wonderful. So, so were you always attracted to painting over other media then, since your dad bought you those oils since you were seven? That's incredible. Yeah, well, I have, that, you know, in my degree, I did a mixture of stuff um, and I did sculpture. I really liked the photography and did a bit of printmaking. But because I'm so excited by so many different subjects and um, different things, that I think I should have one consistent thing and that should be at least the media I, I work in. And so I'm thinking if I keep with oils, then um, I can explore subjects and um, different ideas. But, um, and I just love oils. I just love, love painting and, um, and I love the colors. I just love color. So um, um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm happy with oils. Although I would quite like to some get back into a bit of printmaking. That might be quite nice. And like you say, when we were talking in the green, green room as well, that you have such an eclectic range of things that you, you're painting. Um, is there one consistent theme that you've seen, you know, carry on through your work ever since you're at school? Or is it just totally, you know, what takes your fancy at the time? Um, um, yeah, I guess um, figures and people um, have, is a bit consistent. I never did portraits till I had children. Um, but that has now become quite a consistent theme because um, I painted a couple of um, portraits of my children and then when people have come round to the house they've um, really loved them and then said oh would you paint my children or my husband's is going to be his 40th coming up or you know will you do his portrait so that has become a running theme and um, has continued to be a running theme um, so um, um, that's that's been great um, but um, yeah, and then but other things. I'll be like like these these windows, these aeroplane windows. I'll be sitting on the plane, taking a flight and holiday, and you know, let my my mind run run, run wild. And suddenly, think, oh, wouldn't it be interesting to do a series on that? Um, or you know, you go for a walk and see something. And yeah, so I do get excited by a lot of different things. Um, so um, yeah, it keeps it interesting for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you work from photographs for those, the commissions you do, and also the plain windows, or do you do that from your, from live? Well, from... well uh, traditionally I, I did work a lot more from photographs, um, and um, recently I've um, just trying to work more and more from live. Um, I've um, realised, you know, how much it does make a big difference, and that is one of my bits of advice is, um, you know, anything like from a porch you know like a life drawing class or something like that or painting outside um having to work under that constraint and that time um really pushes your work i think because you really have to think about your brush marks about what you're doing and i think it really can increase your style much quicker than sitting over a photograph and contemplating reproduce because you end up reproducing that photograph because you can't help it because it's sat there whereas when you're painting from life you can't you haven't got that time and you've got um you know much more restraints um and i think um so i'm trying to do more and more from life actually um and especially from portraits i've just done a recent portrait in that corner and um i did that um i, I did that a lot from life I had to um, work on photographs as well, but um, she did sit for me, which um, I think does make a big difference, actually. Um, so, uh, and then I think you can take that knowledge, and then when you do work from photographs, you've got that knowledge which you, you then can transfer to the photograph, if you, if you get what I mean. Um, yeah, so um, I, think it, I think it is quite important, actually. Um, but obviously on an aeroplane, I can't do that. I don't think... Um, <laughs> I would be very impressed if I started to get my oil paints out. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be very popular in that row. No. <laughs> yeah, just get the perps out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, as I forget to say this every single day, but if you do have a question, please pop it in the Ask a Question box and we'll ask Francis towards the end. Um, I think everyone will be so interested to hear about how lockdown affected you and specifically that painting at the top <laughs> back left and um, your work with the, you know, the Sky Portrait Artist Competition. Oh, uh, yeah, well... Um, yeah, when lockdown came, it was all a bit, um, yeah, as, as for everybody, really stressful. And you kind of wonder, um, you know, with your practice, what you're going to do. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I had lots of things cancelled, like I was supposed to be doing the Affordable Art Fair in um, Hampstead and um, other various ones as well. And um, But um, there always seems to be opportunities, I don't know. And, um, 
if you look for them, there, are, there, there seems to be opportunities everywhere. And um, so there was the Grace and Perry Art Club where you could submit in, and um, and the other thing was the Sky Portrait Artist of the Week. And um, so um, yeah, I just thought, oh, that sounds like fun. And um, yeah, and the second, so the first week we had. Um, Oh, who was it? Akram Khan. And then um, the second week was Bernadine Evaristo. And um, yeah, I um, painted. Well, she went because it was a live thing. There was a bit of a problem at the beginning. So um, um, we were sitting around for like about 15 minutes. So I started thinking about the area and the space I sat at. And um, I thought, oh, actually, maybe I'll paint the computer screen. So I started painting it while I was waiting for her to go on air. And um, and um, yeah, so I did that, and um, yeah, it was amazing, really. They phoned me up and um, and said, "Oh, you're one of ten, um, you know, our ten favourites. Um, you, you know, um, we're going to choose the top three, and we'll let you know. Um, you know, obviously on there on the Sunday." And um, yeah, so it's all very exciting, and I and and I couldn't tell anyone, so it was quite. Uh, <laughs> And I was thinking, what's well, so I I'm not one of the ten. And then number two came, number three came, number two came. I thought there was no way I won it. So and that's it then. And then she mentions my name and um can believe it, because um you apply for these things, do things, you never imagine winning. So um and um, I don't think I've ever won anything in my life. So um yeah, it was quite amazing. And you know, there's a couple of thousand people who um, submitted um, and live there was 170,000 people on air so um, it, you know it's a pretty big deal um, for me so um, and then actually um, Bernadine contacted me and asked to buy it so this is actually a print behind me so um, I thought I really needed to have a print of it just to remember it so, oh, of course um, oh how exciting know, uh, she contacted you through what your Instagram or just gave you a call um through instagram i think it was yeah through instagram um so um yeah no she's lovely and she um bless her she um took a photograph of her holding it so i could put it on my instagram feed um so you know i mean it's it's really special it's i'd never forget it and um you know it was um lovely and, and she couldn't have been a nicer woman she's just amazing and her book's amazing and um yeah so um yeah, no, I, I was absolutely delighted. But then after that, they, they were going to do four weeks and they ended up doing nine weeks. So um, so every Sunday, I was like sat there, my family were like like wondering where I was because I've got two young children. And I was like, no, I've got to do this. Now I've won it. I've got to do it every week. I can't not do it. <laughs> and you've got that pressure as well because you think, I can't do a rubbish portrait either. I've got to make sure it's, um, you know, as good as I can possibly do. So, um, yeah. You've got the standard now. <laughs> so I was quite busy, actually. And then I had my NHS portraits I did, um, which is actually below. Um, so um, I, I, you know, the tiles for um, portraits for NHS heroes, and um, I put um, an advert on my Instagram, and you know, it's the first person who contacts you, and you've no idea who's going to contact you, and what photograph you're going to get, and um, yeah, now I got a, a girl called Faye who's, you know, from Newcastle, and absolutely wonderful, and gave me these really fun pictures to work from. So that was another opportunity which, um, you know, kept me busy during lockdown. So. Um, yeah, that's great. Would, would you be able to show us those two pictures a bit more up close for people that um, haven't seen yeah. them? Is that uh, is it easy to take them off the wall or is that? <laughs> yeah, I probably can. I probably won't hang my back again. Pretty young. <laughs> um, this is, so this is a print. Um, so I'm trying to get the reflection. It's got a bit of reflection because it's, um, it's out long enough. <laughs> so that's it's that. a very well-deserved winner. Very well-deserved. That's beautiful. Yeah, well, what they seemed to like was the narrative. Um, and I actually, to be honest, I am quite interested in narrative in painting. That is one theme which is very, when you talked earlier about um, themes in my work, I, I am interested in the story. Um, and um, so um, they like the idea of my brushes there, which, and, and my cup of tea, because I have my cup of tea ready for, you know, because we're sat there for four hours and, um, you know, my setup, and that's what they seem to like. Um, and yeah, that's my NHS one. It's about. It's not a very good print, actually. I've got to get it reprinted. But um, but um, 
yeah so that was uh, sorry again reflections it's not, <laughs> not so bad with paintings but um Wait, was that the size of the original that you did yes brilliant yeah so she's got it up in her wall and um sent me a photograph and um and um, she's yeah it's really nice she said she's, uh, people love it when they come in which um it's nice to hear really so um so, so you took part in obviously lots of things um, during the lockdown period. So how did it impact your work in general? And did you see the lockdown period in hindsight as more of a, you know, curse or, you know, a blessing for you and your work? Yeah, it was quite nice because I didn't have the pressure of art fairs and thinking, um, you know, what, what actually work am I going to put into these things? Um, so I started off actually um, doing a self-portrait because my children always say you've painted so many portraits of different people and you haven't painted yourself. So I started off doing that and then I thought I'll work through the family. Um, so then I painted my daughter and then this guy thing happened and everything else. And so I didn't manage to do my son or my husband. <laughs> I managed to do the dog. Um, and But that was quite nice because I could just focus on the family and sort of, you know, doing portraits for us. Uh, rather than for anyone else so I didn't have to worry what other people think or thought um, or like um, and um, and yeah and now actually other things which have come out of it is a lot of artists are doing a lot of online stuff mm -hmm. so it's been amazing because all these famous artists who I absolutely adore and follow on Instagram are doing workshops and things and um, so I've done a couple of those um, which has been great because there's nowhere I could travel to New York or to um, um, you know all over the world basically and um, you know um, so I've had a lot of access to things that I wouldn't normally have um, and um, yeah so I've, I've basically been thinking more about my technique um, and um, and that's what I'm really concentrating on now and sort of I'm not thinking about what the next art fair is I'm doing. I'm really thinking about just my work and um, and experimenting. So that's quite good fun. Um, you, you know what I'm going to ask you, don't you? <laughs> if you could show us that amazing artwork <laughs> that you showed me in the green room. This is yeah. fantastic. You'll all love it. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, well, since lockdown, I've, I've started a massive painting, which... Um, um, it's a multi-figure painting, which actually has been inspired by an artist I love called Zoe Frank. I don't know if anyone knows her. Um, and um, I did list, um, go on one of her online courses. Um, and so I've been thinking about, um, again, with narrative and about looking at historical paintings and about how figures are organised in space. Um, and, and um, yeah, looking at those masters and thinking about... Um, you know, sort of things like a triangle, a shape, a diagonal, a lot of the paintings, you know, how, how your eye moves across the painting um, and um, the journey you take. So um, I've started this one, but it's really rough. Um, but, it's uh, and I'm still experimenting with colours and things and working out where the figures are placed, but I'll hold it up anyway. Thank you. Um, it's a bit big. Uh, yeah, that's just wonderful. So I, I don't tell me when you is it in the screen? I can't actually see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Do you want to talk about the so, I, maybe a little maybe a little bit longer. <laughs> Just see the bottom a bit. There we are. That's fantastic. It probably hurts your arms, doesn't it, to hold it like that? Yeah. It is just so, wonderful. Yeah, so um that's that's a more experimental piece I'm playing with at the moment. Um and it's just nice to be able to work big. Um, and I'm not thinking about what I'm doing with it. It's more I'm kind of wanting to play with uh, movement and um, and um, colours and um, yeah, the narrative, how your eye moves around the triangle. Um, so um, yeah, a long way to go yet, but um, I'm enjoying it. And um, and you're you're in your studio at the moment, aren't you? I remember you said you could sort of twist your. Yeah, um, I'll twist it without taking the microphone out this time. So, um, so can can you tell us a bit about your process, so how the work comes to be, and how you know when a work's finished, um, and any like artist necessities you have to have in your studio? Um, say that again. Sorry. <laughs> uh, start with sorry. I was a bit of a. Um, tell us a bit about your process and how your work, uh, you know, begins and then ends. Um, well. I guess um, 
it depends what it is but um i guess um i usually start with um taking lots of photographs or something or sketching um and um, trying to work out an idea like the one i just showed you actually that was quite a lot of really involved i looked at quite a few different paintings to think about um, how they worked and um, what I liked about them. And I looked at a lot of different artists and actually I've got a pin board, which I haven't got up at the moment. And I took, um, I printed out paintings I really liked and um, and thought, you know, created a mood board and um, also um, created a mood board of colors as well that I wanted to work with. Um, so, um, and then I did lots of different sketches um, to see what compositions would work. Um, and then built it up from there. Um, and then I just thought, I'm going to go for it now. <laughs> but uh, I usually quite often take things into Photoshop as well and play around with um, things in Photoshop and try different layouts because that's quite another good way of doing it as well as sketching. Um, but, but I usually do um, underpainting first and um, try and map it out on the canvas and then um, build with you know thin washes and then build it up. Um, as I get more confident about what I'm doing, I guess. And do you have any like necessities for your studio? So do you listen to any music while you work um, and like mediums and things that you use with your oils? Um, yes. So um, I listen to a lot of things. I love Audible. When I, my mum actually got me um, a subscription to Audible and I hadn't even heard of it. So um, for, um, and I just love, I love actually listening to, like um horrors or murder mysteries or something like that something which keeps me gripped and focused so then i don't start going making myself a cup of tea or start putting the washing on or whatever so it actually keeps me um, really focused but also i love things like listening to desert island discs mm. um and um and also i've got into um oh gosh i've forgotten his name um there's a website oh what's he called um but he there's a you there's um loads and loads of artist interviews he interviews lots of artists and his name's completely gone for me um a lot of american artists but i just find it absolutely fascinating and some of them are uh, john dalton that's it um and the last one i listened to about five hours long but it, it it's all about an artist their journey and you know their their thoughts and stuff so it's absolutely fascinating so i've only just discovered those actually um so i highly recommend those um so um yeah I, I i yeah i have to listen to something it keeps it it's nice oh. like you say it keeps you focused on murder mysteries definitely <laughs> yeah yeah no i love it it's, um it's um, really good <laughs> i kind of think oh i want to go back to the studio because i want to obviously paint but also i want to know what's going to happen next so yeah. um, <laughs> So uh, no, it's good. And you asked, did you ask me about mediums or something? Like yeah, mediums and, and literally just like the brands of paint you use and that kind of thing. So I use a mix of Gamsol and Gamblin, um, which I don't know whether I've got a bottle of it somewhere. I don't know where it is. Oh, I thought it might have a bottle of it. Uh, I, this is why I use Gamsol. Um, it's like turpentine, but it's um, non-toxic, um, so um, you can't smell it at all, and it's not bad for you, I don't think, at all. Um, and gambling, which um, is a bit like um, linseed oil, but um, it helps your paints to dry a bit quicker as well, I think. Um, and, and then I use predominantly Michael Harding oil paints, because um, the colours are just so rich, and, you know, the pigment the pigment amount is much higher in, in their, their paints than quite a lot of other brands. Oh, Leslie's just linked, I think, the podcast you were talking about. Yeah, That's great. no, they're absolutely amazing. I, honestly, there's so many of them. Um, he he um, asked to he pay a little money to pay, buy him a cup of tea, um, you know, um, but they are all free. But um, um, really, really good. Um, all, all, you know, they're all painters, I think. I think well, all the ones I've, maybe it's because I'm only interested, well, not that I'm only interested in painting, that's rubbish, but the ones I've listened to, or I've chosen to listen to are, are painters. So um, um, they're really inspirational and make you think, you know, because even they're saying, oh, I don't know what I'm doing or, um, um, you know, that it makes you feel like everyone has that internal struggle with themselves. It's, you know, it's not just you. It's, you know, people who are, 
you know, got thousands and thousands of followers and, um, you know, they're still wondering what they're doing half the time. So um, you don't feel so alone. <laughs> yeah, it's very reassuring. And as you said, there's 165 episodes. <laughs> That's a lot yeah. of painting. Yeah, so I've, I've only listened, I've, I've only just discovered it. So I've listened to about eight, I think. So I've got a long way to go. So between those and my murder mysteries, then I'll be, um, I'll be right. <laughs> You're set. <laughs> exactly. So we're, we're going to have a look at your website in a moment. Um, but I wondered if there was a piece of advice that you could give to other artists that has come from, you know, your experience and your journey so far. Um, yeah, well, I've got, I did write a few down, but the first one was painting from life. But I think I've covered that. Um, I do think that's um, um, key. And also, um, I think Louisa Crispin said it, it's just saying yes to everything. Like, um, like doing this live interview my first thought is oh my goodness I don't want to do that that sounds, that sounds really stressful <laughs> but you, it's without you have to just put yourself into these situations and um and then the next time it becomes easier and you just don't know what comes out of something like I did Kent Painters last year or the year before and um and then that led to an a, um, interior design get in contact with me and um, wanting to have my paintings in her show home you know it's not just about these art fairs or whatever it might not just be about selling your work it it's about the contact contacts you get from them um so um um yeah it's uh, i think just saying yes to everything is uh, definitely a, a applying to everything um and the other thing is um we all get rejected <laughs> i get rejected from things all the time you know you apply to things and and you get rejected but you know you also one time will get accepted like that sky portraits thing you know um it's just chance and sometimes it's just being there at the right moment or you know a lot of it's just luck um so um yeah i think it's just you just got to do the art for yourself and enjoy it and um and and you know don't worry about rejection <laughs> um and yeah so yeah I think and and the other thing I think um is um, which Louisa Crispin said is um painting every day and um in a way I kind of wonder whether I'd quite like to do one of those challenges because there's quite a few challenges on the internet at the moment aren't there like the Strava challenge and the paint 100 head challenge um, mm. So you do a, a, a portrait every day, but I think something like that, which really drives you and focuses you, I think, you know, it's really good because you can just keep doing the same thing and just get better and better at it. Um, so, um, you know, I think there's so many opportunities out there to, to push you. Um, it's just finding the right opportunities for you. That's great. And I think we're going to have a quick look at your website. I think Leslie's going to pop it on the screen in a second. And maybe you can talk us through some of the work on there. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. Cool. Are you putting it? Up? I want to have. Yeah. Oh no, I think Leslie's just popping. There we go. <laughs> I think it's going to go full screen in a second. Okay. There we okay. Go. Yeah. So these are um, a lot of my um, city scenes, um, which um, we lived in Singapore for a year, um, and um, so from living in the countryside and living in the city, it kind of got me inspired by cities and people's journeys about walking um in cities and um so the bottom ones bottom two are from singapore and then i came back and then started painting london because it kind of made me think about london as a tourist i guess coming back to england um and actually that one with the grace and perry flags um got selected and uh, i was artist of the year shortlist artist of the year by artist and illustrator magazine and so that was displayed at the mal galleries um so um that uh, uh, yeah uh, that was a good one um and actually i put grace and perry walking across the screen at the bottom left there's um, him him walking across but that what i see that's i composed all that and thought about the colors thought about the characters i wanted to have in there and have um, the characters walking across out of focus against um things which were in focus and things to bring you in like there's a dog in the in the white van looking out the window um and um you know um I, yeah I, I just i loved all the narrative of it and um so yeah and no, i really enjoyed that and um and these are my portraits and obviously take 
taking a bit of time to load. So there's a lot of the sky portraits of the year portraits there. Um, the recent one of my son, which I did at the top left, um, which I quite like because um, I was I kept the brush marks quite loose on his hair and um, and then really focused in on the face and the line between the light and the shadow. Um, the um, Oh, what's the edge called? But anyway, that, that third line um, is so key for portraits. And so I really focused in between the light and the, the shadow and the Terminator edge. Um, so that was because um, every time I do a painting, I guess I'm thinking and exploring different things because you always feel like you're learning um, mm. and um, there's something you want to pursue in that particular portrait. Yeah, that's quite an old piece. <laughs> that says um, some leaves in Hampstead. <laughs> Um, and these are dogs, so you can see I do uh, that. That mm -hmm. I painted. That's our dog um, Flynn, um, sort of red and Irish setter, um, and that was in lockdown. He was very happy in lockdown because no one was I going. Bet. To <laughs> <laughs> and he had all the children. The children went at school, so he had loads of attention, and loads of walks. So um, a lot of these commissions, the pet ones, most of them are, to be honest. And that's my dog again. Um, he's actually. That's that atmospheric. Yeah, he's standing on ice, um, I was, um, and um, it's walking near us in the Ashdown Forest. Um, so yeah, very different style than my other stuff. So these are um, my windows, um, aeroplane window ones, um, which actually um, I've now um, they've sold really well, and I've had them in the affordable art fair and um, Olympia. Um, and now I've made a series of prints from them so that because um, buying them individually is quite expensive, but um, buying them as a print, you can get the whole effect of them, um, you know, on an A1 or whatever size you want. Um, and it's much more affordable. Um, so um, that's something new I've explored. And Art Republic actually have contacted me and want to um, start selling them. So um, that'll be interesting to see how successful that will be. That's fantastic. Amazing. That's really, really good. And so what's the best way for um, someone who might be watching to contact you and to well, buy your work? Is it through the website? Um, yeah, through my website or my Instagram. I guess I'm more on my Instagram, um, you know, um, as everyone is, but um, on my website will go straight to my email if you use the form there. Um, so, um, yeah, that's either really. Um, so, no, that'd be great. But yeah, I do um, a lot of commissions and, and, um, and then there's my own work as well. Excellent. And we've got some questions here for you. So, oh, so someone says, what did you win? I take that's the Sky Portrait Artist. Um, yeah, you don't win anything, actually. That'd be quite nice if I would win something. <laughs> no, it's just the, um, you just win, like, I guess, just... Um, honour. <laughs> the honour, I guess. Um, yeah, so um, just you just it's like you just win. Yeah, you just they they selected your painting, but um, you know obviously it's yeah, it's just um, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know whether you win anything on the pro. Oh no, you win to do a commission of someone, don't you? That I suppose that's yeah. Your, there was one um, with uh, Graham Norton was one of the sitters, wasn't he, for the big commission? I'm sure pre in previous years. Yes, yeah. They so you do a commission. That's what that's what it's your that's what you you win basically, isn't it? You get like yeah. But, but um. And one of the questions is: Do you work from sketchbooks as well as the photographs? Um, yes. Well, um, actually, I've got um, my sketchbook here. Um, hold on. So, like when I was doing the composition for that big painting. Like I, I sort of working up ideas, um, and you know, uh, you know, I sort of, um, yeah, I do. Um, even just really naive. I don't know if you can see. Oh gosh, um, really quick sketches and notes and things. So, um, I mean, if I'm doing a portrait, I might do a commission portrait. I might um, just do a sketch of the person first, just get an idea. Um, of the person and their face and their structure just to get it in my head and think about where to lay the, the head in the canvas. Um, so I might do that, um, but I also will take photographs as well. So I'll work with a combination of the two really. Um, That's brilliant. Your, your sketchbook looks so chunky. <laughs> yeah, it's quite chunky. I've stuck quite a lot of things in there. Um, yeah, and, and things like 
I'll try different colors, colorways. Um, they look quite similar there, but anyway. Um, yeah, I think it's quite good to do really. And also it gives you um, time to process um, and also to show your journey when you go back and think about what you actually did as opposed to just coming up with a finished item. Um, but it depends really on the painting that I'm doing. Um, whether Like some of those three windows I painted from life, so I didn't do anything beforehand. I just put my easel up and started painting. So um, that, that's very different. And, and is your studio separate to where you live or is that is that where you, your house is? Yeah, it's in, in my house. Um, so that has its benefits and not so, um, yeah, it has positives and negatives. Um, it's lovely being my house because I just be there. And because I've got young children, time's really crucial because um, I have to manage them and everything. But um, I think I do miss being in a studio environment with other artists because I think you feed off each other. And I think, you know, that would be really nice um, to be able to wander someone else's studio and um, and also for networking or for um, quite often you have open studios, don't you? So um, I think I miss a bit of that. Um, but um, it is definitely good having it in my home as well because I can just pop in here when I've got an odd moment. So, um, yeah. But I am both, this studio is quite new. It's kind of, we've just sort of developed it. And actually, I was going to do the open studios this summer. Obviously, it got cancelled. But I put the tracking system so that because um, so I was going to have um, five artists showing their work here. Um, and um, so I guess it's been useful for this. <laughs> but it's actually useful anyway because I can move things around. And um, I just have to make sure I framed it or got some sort of um, something to hang it up on the back. It all looks wonderful. And, and so do you have a, um, a daily routine with your work? Or is it very much, you know, how it's structured around everything else that you're doing? Um, well, I tend, I do have, I basically try and get in, as, I try and keep it as a working day. Um, but I drop the kids off at school, then walk the dog. And then, um, and then um, I just try and crack on straight away and get on with it um, and try and not make too many cups of tea and get distracted and try and avoid looking at Instagram and uh, <laughs> anything else. So, um but um, yeah, I, I, and, I, and I basically paint them until I pick the kids up at school. So um, it kind of gives me, um, yeah, I'm kind of a working day, a bit shorter maybe. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, brilliant. I think Leslie's gonna join us back up on screen. <laughs> I'm not sure if Aunt Felicity's had any more luck getting back on or not. There we <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't appear to have Felicity. We do have one more question. Oh, which do you mean? Oh, sorry. From your city, and it's do you prefer a limited color palette, uh, or think you've now got your uh, established your signature colors? Ah, interesting. Well, um, I actually <laughs> was a just tricky done, one. <laughs> well, I've just done, uh, um, well, I've just been doing a um, Dennis Sarasin. I don't know, uh, don't know whether she knows that artist, but anyway, he's doing um, an online workshop this weekend, which um. And we've been set something to do um, a paint portrait just with a limited palette. Um, so I'm quite interested in doing that now. So I'm quite, I get excited too easily by different things. And <laughs> now I'm really thinking, because I want to paint my husband, I'm thinking um, he's got quite brown skin. So I'm thinking, oh, actually, I'm quite excited about doing sort of browns and oranges and uh, maybe contrasting it with the blue. So really limiting it. But um, I, I think it is quite important to try and not paint you know I think it is really important to think about what palette you're going to use and I think actually doing uh, swatches of the colors you're going to use for each painting before you actually start is actually um, really important and whether you're doing a complementary or split color or um, um, an analogous or however you pronounce it color scheme um, it really does enhance it because otherwise you can just get too excited with colour and uh, not think about it properly and not, you know, use it in the best way. So, um, um, but yeah, I'll be posting these new ones of my limited palette, so I'll let you know whether I, how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say, I'm so drawn to the, the way that you put your work in a context. I love that, that, you know, it's not just the view through the window but it's the view as you're looking through the window so it's almost like we're being given your artist's eye view and that for me is fascinating 
you get this context with the work which as you say builds that narrative which I yeah you can even see it in the latest portrait that you've done down there that you put the bit of the window in do you think that's a conscious thing now that you're doing yeah I think I I, I, I think it's just ever since my um, fine art degree because um, although I never got taught anything technical um, I, it was always the concepts. It was always, what is this painting about? So I think I've just got it drummed into me. So I feel like if there's no narrative, I, I struggle a bit. And um, so I'm always thinking, why am I doing this painting? What, what message am I trying to say? Um, even if I'm just doing a plain air painting like this with those windows, I'm still thinking about what is the narrative. And, you know, I'm looking out over a graveyard and there's a, you know, and there's already a narrative and there's a flower there. And what's the, what's, what, 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 what's the story? Um, so even if I haven't actually started with the story, I'm, when I'm painting, I'm thinking there is a story here. And somehow, um, you know, I, I do think it's important. Um, but, um, do you ever bring yeah. extra things in then? Do you kind of like bring it so it doesn't have to be exactly what's in front of you? You will actually bring in props, will you? Or to paint? Yeah, I will, yeah. Or I'll, um, um, you know, I, I thought about what objects were going to go on, on these two, what, what objects were going to go in the foreground. Um, so, and took things out as well. Um, and then I'll, um, in the background, you know, I'll, I'll rearrange it a bit. So, so the great, so there was a gravestones. <laughs> so the gravestones were in the position I wanted them, not what was actually where they were. Um, so um, I'm thinking about the composition, even even when I'm painting plain air, yes. um, to make it work as a painting. Um, yeah, then I guess the, otherwise I may as well paint a photograph, might and I? I don't know. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Because Brenda was saying yesterday when she was talking about the fact that she doesn't really bother about perspective. She just likes everything, you know, she just kind of does this kind of helicopter view. But with you, I was intrigued because they are like like mini, like little still lifes. Um, and I was intrigued by how you do that. And that's so fascinating to hear that you, you do kind of construct them to tell the story, like a storyteller. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Um, yeah. So you were saying um, the other thing, the other question I had, because obviously I sit there listening and answering all the <laughs> bits on the side and finding out that gently does it. I'm, I mean, we've been doing obviously all these interviews during lockdown. I'm now completely intimidated because now we've got 165 as a goal, Molly. Don't uh, be scared have have you that. ever listened to any of those? <laughs> I haven't, but I am definitely going to listen to a couple now. Um, yeah. Because we're thinking of ch changing some of ours and extracting the sound so we can make them into podcasts as well. What's the future for you? I, you know, I can see some of we're now starting to come out of lockdown, and Molly and I've been and the team have been having conversations about what the future holds. What's the future for Francis? What do you think you're aspiring to? Oh gosh, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Well. I just keep learning, I suppose. I think it's, I don't think with, as an artist, you ever, if you stop learning, you stop enjoying it, I guess, and trying new things and developing and um, experimenting. Um, so I think that is the most important thing because that gives me the most fulfillment. Obviously, it's great to be in certain galleries or do certain shows, but to keep learning as an artist, I think is, the most important thing for me. Is there like an aspirational subject that you would like to really, really paint at some point? Um, well, I'm quite, yeah, well, I think, um, I think these multi-figure um, paintings, which I'm just starting, I think I'm quite interested in that because I've always been interested in movement and, and, um, and time and change. And so I think I, I, I will be pursuing that sort of, um, um, subject matter. Um, I'm also um, going to do like a sort of still life, but um, I, was, I haven't actually started it. I don't even know when I'm going to do it, but I was thinking of, um, I just um, get ideas and I was just thinking about our milk bottles and how they arrive each day. And sometimes you get a grapefruit juice, sometimes you get full fat milk and they come in the little container, the old container. I just thought it'd be quite nice to document that them arriving and and um, disappearing and sort of the narrative there and about the position and the shape and and um and i thought i'd quite like to do that next that sounds <laughs> but, amazing yeah, <laughs> i can't so wait I to see that, that. <laughs> yeah so i think it's things like that's like the present the paint the big painting i'm doing it's kind of like 
I, I think I want to pursue a bit more time and not something which is so structured. Um, and I want to carry on doing more plain air paintings as well and um, painting for life. So um, between that, and then I get um, like quite a few commissions. So I will be carrying on doing portrait commissions. But I do love doing portraits, although I do find it very stressful um, doing it off people, presenting it to them to see what they think. And no one's ever said anything negative at all. But um, you always worry because when you paint portraits of someone to give to someone, you know, it's how you view them. And um, that's um, always quite scary. Um, yeah. So um, to make sure Whereas you get that, that lightness. When you're painting um, an, an inanimate object, as it were, then you know, there's not quite that horror associated No, it doesn't with matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And if like I paint a tree, it doesn't matter if the branch is sort of wrong or wonky or whatever. But when it's a face, if you haven't got that eye or that mouth or that, you know, just a tiny tweak and you can, you know, you can change it, but it, you know, makes or breaks it, you know, if you've been really capturing that person. So it, it is quite demanding, actually. Yeah. Um, so it's quite nice to have my, my other stuff where I can experiment and be a bit freer, I guess. Mm, the balance. Yeah, exactly. The balance between yeah, It's nice to have a balance. See someone has uh, popped up another question. That's a beautiful portrait of your son. Did he like it? Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. Annie, that's a mean question. <laughs> oh, what? No, because she, she's saying, did he like it? I was like, do children yeah. like anything as mothers do? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, he was really, in, he, I, he was really, um, he started off being interested in me, uh, of sitting there for me, and then he was really not into sitting there for me at all. Um, and um, so then I ended up having to finish off with a photograph which is understandable. Um, I did put like an iPad in front of him, but um, yeah, he suddenly became really uninterested. But no, I think he, he does like it. it. It's funny because I, I, what I really like about that portrait actually is because he's on the cusp between being not being a child anymore. And I think actually it's really captured a moment where he's kind of a child and not a child. Um, yeah, so, that's um, beautiful. Yeah, no, I, I think he's got amazing eyes. I'll bring it up close. He has got amazing eyes. Um, not, I know that he's not a star, but um, Evan always marks on his eyes. Um, there you can you see, see it. It's, it's stunning. It's, stu it's, it's got an ethereal quality to it. Yeah. And uh, as you say, it, it's otherworldly. So you can see he's just transitioning, can't you? How old is he? He's um, 12. Yeah. He's going to be 13 soon, so... Um, How amazing for him, when he's older, to have that um, portrait. <laughs> that just being well, just, um, such a, just such a gift. Oh, well, thank you. I, he's got... I've painted a couple of him. I've painted one of him when he's one and a half as well, which, um, yeah, that's quite oh, nice. so, so um, cute. Well, I'm really sad that we haven't been able to get Felicity up on screen. She's here with us, and I know she can hear us and everything, but she just hasn't appeared on our screen. And I'm not really sure, we haven't had this situation before where someone hasn't been able to actually get up on screen, and I'm not really sure why that is. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to look at another date when uh, before the end of the run on the 30th when Felicity can join us, maybe next weekend. And Felicity, if you're listening, hopefully you are. I will um, contact you. And anyone who's joined us to listen to Felicity, I'm really, really sorry. We, I literally don't understand why she can't appear on screen. Um, it's those tech gods again. They get hmm. us. They're just there, just keeping us in our place, really, and saying we're not in charge of it, it's in charge of us. So it's been absolutely fascinating listening to your story, Felicity, and thank you, Molly. You did a brilliant job of guiding Felicity through that. It's Francis. Been oh, <laughs> Francis. You didn't oh, say you were going to do that. I did say I was going to do that, didn't I? It's having two <laughs> Felicities and Francises. So it's been amazing, and Francis. And, and <laughs> Flutters and Featherstones. So it's been amazing. And uh, Francis. And <laughs> I've really enjoyed it. Was, it's such a pleasure for me to be able to sometimes sit back and just listen. Um, so, no, thank you both so much. And 
we will get Felicity, don't you all worry. We will get her. It's now my mission to get her on the screen with us <laughs> before the end of the run. So, uh, yeah, don't you worry. Stay tuned and we'll put a date up when she's gonna, we're going to get her back on the screen. But thank you so much, both of you. And we will see you tomorrow. We have tomorrow, Molly is interviewing Joe Starkey. So looking forward to that very much. Have a lovely rest of your Sunday, everyone. And we'll see you tomorrow. And thank you very much as well. Oh, thank you. You've been thank brilliant. You. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Well, well what really you're doing is absolutely amazing. So um, it's great to give everyone the, this opportunity. So um, oh, thank you very, very much. Thank you for saying thank you. It's really nice when people say thank you. Um, it is quite, a, <laughs> it's quite an epic adventure. I think is how I would describe it. And um, when we decided to go into it, I don't think we kind of realised how, how, how epic it was going to be. But actually, the artists have been incredible. And you've all just been amazing. And we couldn't have asked for better. And as I always say, we are nothing without all of you. It'd be really dull if everyone had to just listen to myself and Molly talking about our story over and over again. So you all make it really fascinating for everyone to listen to. And we're super nosy, aren't we, Molly? So we love like asking lots of questions <laughs> and finding out all, all the... I love the stories because it's just, it's just so interesting to hear every single story is unique and that is special. It's special to be able to hold the space for artists to be able to tell their story and for the audience to hear how unique and interesting each of you are because so often they don't get to hear your story because they your work is presented by a gallery or someone else and they don't hear actually the human behind behind that outcome so no I think it's a special thing and I'm very and we're very honored to be the ones who are facilitating it so thank you well, thank you very much. And we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> with Joe. Thanks, Francis. You've been brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. And thank you for listening.